Action. I have joining me in the studio to make sense of all of this. We have our analyst in the house, Obani Akinwale, here with me in the studio. Ani, it's good to see you. My pleasure. Good here. morning. Good morning. And I have joining me from our Buja studio, Mohamed Bate, uh, the Vice President, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics. It's nice to have you join me right now, Mohamed. Okay, uh, Obani, the, the point is, if you look at the trends, it seems one union at one point is waiting somewhere to go on strike, from medical to educational to, you know, and, and so on. What do you think is really going on? Because this may not be the last of this. Uh, what is going on fundamentally for me is uh, our, for our faulty constitution. Hmm. Uh, constitution? Yes, our constitution is faulty. Uh, if our constitution is not faulty, uh, I don't see any reason why federal government will continue to create more federal institutions when the existing ones are not catered for. Uh, I don't see where a school will continue to exist without the federal government setting up the visitation panel. Uh, I don't see a situation whereby, uh, let's say Lagos State Polytechnic in Lagos, where the governor is said to be paying uh, the, uh, the emolument, the subventions, and what have you, will join the strike uh, when... Uh, let's say, for example, Ogun State Polytechnic refused to pay its staffs. So you find out that, and you have a country whereby uh, what is booming more nowadays is uh, uh, private institutions, public, uh, call it nursery and primary school, Montessori, uh, secondary school, polytechnic, monotechnics, and university. So you discover that who are the owners of these institutions? Ex-president this, ex-president that, uh, ex-vice president this, ex-vice president that. So which shows clearly that we have technically privatized education. And the only way that can happen is because we have a national assembly that has refused to pass the benchmark that the UNESCO said, fund education with at least 26% of your budget. Then you ask yourself again, do we know the budget? Do you know, has anybody come up to us in this country to tell us how much we are earning from either oil or from this sector and what have you? Then you now go back to the, to the polytechnic system. The polytechnic and the monotechnic, even our education system, are the graduate that we have now, are they entrepreneur, are they employable, are the curriculum ever rejected? I could recall like, when I was in the secondary school, we were using Abbott, and the unit will also be in KGF. Hmm. When you come out and you discover that in another uh, physics textbook, the unit will be in Newton. And you find out that the curriculum that they are still taking them through, that what we passed through in about 20, 30 years ago is still the same thing. And fundamentally, we have a National Assembly that's supposed to serve a check and balance for the executive, check our policies, formulate laws to ensure that we have a working system. You have an agreement with the union in 2010. This agreement was never fulfilled. A government came in and he said, we have released 18 billion to you. We are intervening with 30 billion. We are going to form this association, I mean, the visitation panel. They refused to do it. Another government comes in and said, okay, in 2018, guys, sit down. Let's see what the, reali the reality is, and we are going to do X, Y, Z. You look at the Minister of, uh, of Education now. He said, they will again look at the tax import agenda. So the question we ask ourselves is that the one that was looked at in 2010 by Jonathan administration, the one that was looked at by this same man in 2018, what has happened? So you find out that government at every level Permit me to say, as failed the citizens, our health is in comatose. Children of the poor man cannot go to public schools. Even the, pub the so-called public schools, the cost of going to those schools are expensive. And here we are today, Polytechnic is going on strike. I can bet it with you. After this strike, university will go on their own. It's a system that is not working. And we need to look at how do we rejig so-called system and make it functional. You can't ask somebody that is paid, for example, in, in, uh, in Lagos State, for example, to join a national strike. What you have done effectively is that you have technically empowered all the private polytechnics in Lagos at the detriment of the public schools. And what again, what you are doing gradually is that you are eroding away people that are paying tax to fund this place. Then again, in the, in the system, most of these lecturers are also on sabbatical. And when they go on sabbatical, where do they go to? They go to private institutions to go and lecture. These are, these are, if we say our public schools are not functioning well, the lecturers at the private institutions are not from the moon. They are from this place. So why is it that it's easier for individual entity to set up a school system mm. that is working? Whereas our government that collect tax from us, that collect petrol subsidy from us, mm. that collect everything, no, that has no, more life, access no security, to resources. no help. Mm. And yet they, what the poor man wants, just quality education. And a nation you refuse to train. 
<laughs> it's just like people will always say, we are not sitting on time bomb again. Mm. We are, the time bomb is already hitting our, our bomb bomb. Already. Because what we are doing now is that we are telling people now that, first of all, people said if you go to school, when you go to school, you get gainfully employed. Mm. Now we know that there is no employment. Now again is that there is no even way of you going to that school. So there are two things we are going to face now. People that are not even willing to go to school because the public schools have been shut down and have been shut away from them because they don't have the means of going to private school. Then we have the rest of people that are even graduating, that are not employable. And you have a government that the only thing we see is just to say, we'll sit down every time, every, every time to see that we, we know the issues. We know our capacity. All right. At what but, time but, do you come out? Yeah. But Nii, when you talked about the issue of the Constitution, well, we wait for uh, Mohammed to, to, you know, connect in. But when you talked about the issue of the, the Constitution earlier, yeah. it, the point there is, how does the Constitution connect with the inadequacies in education, the, the maybe if, if I have to put the, the inadequate competencies, if you have to put it that mm -hmm. way, and all of that, how does, how does the Constitution relate so to that? How will the Constitution provide for creation of public institutions without mm -hmm. proper funding? How will the Constitution provide for a public institution without proper governing council? How will the institution provide for creating of uh, employing people without making provision for how they will be sustained? How will a constitution that will say we are running a federal system, will everything that will happen in Lagos State Polytechnic, or Shun State Polytechnic, or Gun State Polytechnic, will be decided by somebody at the federal? Do you know what this man is saying? He said some states have not implemented the minimum wage uh, that for over nine months. Nonetheless, because of this, they are going on strike. So what it means is that they say, for example, a, like, a state like Sokoto is refusing to pay the back, back end allowances. So what will eventually happen is that by the time these allowances are paid to those states, what will happen to the guy in Lagos who has paid? But one thing we don't know is this. Mm. The NYC, whatever, call up will happen at its normal time. What that means is that the guys that are going to Lagos State Polytechnic, for example, now, you have de denied them the opportunity of getting enrolled with their colleagues. What you have taken away from them is time, it's resources and it's energy. Now, the second part is this. If we run a proper federal system, Lagos should be able to legislate how Lagos should be governed. Mm. Now, it is not the responsibility. Yes, the unions could be national, but you can't have a situation whereby, let's say, for example, a state like Oshun is paying all its primary school teachers, just for, for example. And because a state like, let's say, Zamfara or Taraba is not paying its primary school teachers, then you're not done too. It doesn't work that way in any federal system. If they, if they want to sympathize with you, it is. And that was what happened in the University of Illinois case. When they asked went on strike, and the United Illinois Forty Nine said they are, not, they are going, and the rest said they are not going. Mm -hmm. We could see how the system is. So if we're running a proper system, if government do not, if the National Assembly know their job, it is a constitutional right of the federal government executive to set up the station panel for these schools. Why are they not setting it up? It is the federal government that sat down with this uh, ASU, ASU, Ed Union to agree on their demand. Why has it not been met? Mm. Is there no law that forbid the federal government from always reneging from their pledges? Or is the federal government not aware of the amount of resources available to them? I read one of the one of the agreements where the, this, the Minister for Education was saying that President Buhari in 2018 has asked mm. the, Minister for, uh, the Minister for Finance to look for 30 billion to solve this problem. But unfortunately, 2021, here we are. Mm. The same problem is not solved. Okay. L let, me, uh, let me put you on hold, Abani, and uh, get uh, uh, Mohamed Mate, the, the Vice President, Academic Start Union and Polytechnics, join us from Abuja, uh, this time on Skype. Mohamed, uh, uh, it's good to have you join me. I was asking earlier uh, that uh, when it comes to your long list of demands from the government, can you pinpoint them and make us understand why you're going on strike at this time? Thank you very much. I think the strike issues are very clear. Mm. First, you have government itself in 2014 set up what they call need assessment. This team visited all the public polytechnics, both federal and state governments owned, and they came up with a figure of the gap of infrastructure that need to be filled at 800 billion. Government agreed they were going to do something to bridge this gap. In 2017, we had to go on strike to ensure that that is enforced. Government pledged the first tranche of release of money of 40 billion. We are in 2021, not one COBO has been released. And uh, we wonder if at 2014, the deficit is 800 billion. <laughs> 
Now, with all the inflation and the erosion of the value of our currency, what it will be today, when we're still talking about release of the first tract of 40 billion. Then you also look at the issue of governing councils. What did it take to constitute governing council? The government components on that governing council is just five people. Yet, here we are, one year after the, the, the elapse of the tenure of the last council, government is yet to put council in place. What does it portray for the polytechnic sector? It means the governance structure of the polytechnics are being put to a stop. Principal officers whose tenure have expired cannot be appointed because you need a governing council to do the appointment. Mm -hmm. Staff whose promotions are due for one year cannot be promoted because you need government, governing council to do that. We have some of our staff that are being owed salary. In Abia State, 20 month, 24 months salary is being owed. We have to take that government before Human Rights Commission, before they start even paying. Up to today, they are owing 24 months salary. What kind of teaching will take place in that kind of environment? You're expecting the teachers there to turn our students into market? Then standardization of in, in the sector has been a problem. You have a regulator that is not functional. And that is why for us, we are advocating as a demand, as one of the demands in this tribe, that we need a polytechnic commission. For goodness sake, the universities have a commission. Colleges of education also have a commission. It is only polytechnic where you have us merge with 600 other institutions that are at sub tertiary level. All the technical colleges, all the craft centers, all the innovation centers, we are much under MBTE. And because of this, MBTE has lost focus on the polytechnic education. All the things that this sector need, the union has to stand up and start fighting. Ordinary review of the law establishing this pol the polytechnics in 2019 has to be done by the union. And we have a regulator. When universities miscellaneous act were going to be amended, it was an executive deal. But for polytechnics, it's a private bill after a lot of lobbying by our members. And this is why we say, no, this can't continue. All right, Mohammed, the, the, the Minister of Education, uh, Damor Damu, has said that uh, government has looked into your demands. And in fact, in, one of the, in the report we played earlier on, I don't know if you, if you, if you watched it, yeah, he, he was saying that they were just waiting for the Easter break to be over <laughs> before uh, some of the things will be drastically looked into. What, what does that mean to you? Honestly, it does not mean anything because the same man made this promise in February, in this February this year, that he is going to co they are going to constitute councils. We are in April now, and that those councils have not been constituted. So he had made promises. We want to believe, as a minister of Federal Republic of Nigeria, that he will live by those promises. But words do not translate to action, and that is our experience with Ministry of Education. All the myriad of problems we have outlined there is a failure of both our regulators, the MBT, and the supervisors, the Ministry of Education. They are simple, simple matters that do not require resources to be resolved. Constitution of Council doesn't require any resources. Establishing a Polytechnic Commission for us does not require resources. Solving the issues of regulation in state polytechnics, most of the salaries being owed are state polytechnics, are state polytechnics in Edo, in Benue, in Kogi, all the staff there are being owed some level of emoluments monthly. Like I said, in Abia, 24 months. In some, five, six months. And then you expect good teaching to take place. And all you need is for a regulator. Sir, hmm. the diplomas being awarded by these institutions are all national diplomas. Education is concurrent, we all agree. State governments and federal have the right. Even local government and private people can establish polytechnic. But regulation of these institutions is a national thing. It's a national certificate they are awarding, not a private or ABIA state polytechnic certificate. It's a national diploma. And then the law empowers MBT to regulate them. Mm. So if they are not state looking, li living with standards, if you don't pay salaries in your state, how do you expect the standards to be maintained? All right. And that is our argument. And that is why we are also tired of MBT. 
All right, we, we have to leave you here for now. Uh, Mohammed Bati, yeah. the Vice President, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics. Uh, I, I will look forward to us ha holding this discussion again so we can understand different dynamics and what the way forward should look like. Thank you very much for talking to us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, Obani, before, before we go, uh, the issue of polytechnics has really been on the minds of Nigerians for a long time. Uh, and if you look at what Polytechnic is meant to do, mm -hmm. they, 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 in fact, they have the power and capacity to mm -hmm. transform the economy of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What should we be doing to change and transform that? First is uh, our government needs to look at the purpose of creating pol uh, the mm. Polytechnic education. Mm -hmm. Now, is for us to, uh, the poly like you mentioned, there is a, the narrative that the Board of Technical Education was supposed to over, but when you now have a polytechnic that accountancy, banking and finance, mm. you will public bar, administration, you will find out that mm. a lot of things that are supposed to come out from the ingenuity of the. You remember the dose of innovation from Federal Polylaro, Federal mm. Poly Ede, mm. Yaba College of Technology, mm. and the way it was designed for them to come up with the technology aspect whereby the engineer guys do the design and the presentation is done. But what do we have now? And that was why I said, he mentioned it himself. He said, it has to do with the regulation. It has to do with our laws. It has to do with penalties for people not doing the laws. What does it take, the Mr. President, to say, he was in London, he said the IGP has been removed, another one has been there. So why can't we set up these committees and commissions? It doesn't take APC number of years to remove uh, a money to put in a bunny. So they should be able to do this. How do you want somebody that has not been paid for 24 months? They have kids. And if you are unable to pay teacher for 24 months, I wonder what kind of facilities are available for those students. So right. the government needs to sit up, needs to be serious, and our legislator, okay. they need to be up and doing, rather than doing all this jamboree, this, this is supposed to be the oversight function. All to right. ensure that we have we, a, a nation that all of us can be quit better to our, to our generation. All, all right. Thank you very much, Abani Akinwali, for Thank coming you. on the program. Right. And uh, those issues you have raised, I just hope that uh, things change. That's what Nigerians wait to see. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm.